Hey guys, it's Eric with the Miller Park Minute, where we're throwing strikes and getting likes, hitting dingers, getting listeners, back again with another podcast. This is your only first daily podcast. We upload every morning, 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. We are on Google, Amazon, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Public, Radio Public, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. So click the subscribe button and get notifications on so we can... Uh, you can be in the loop when we post new videos and when we go live. Um, we're doing this. We're, we're putting out Bruce content every day, no matter what. Push come to shove, we're doing it. We're talking baseball. Uh, we are, believe it or not, guys, a day away. Like, literally, this is coming out Friday. So, good Friday to you. Friday is a great day. Um, and uh, tomorrow, we get to, we get to watch baseball. Well... A form of baseball. It's not exactly pure baseball. Um, yeah. But we get to watch them figure out the rules and all that stuff. And it'll be interesting to see who they roll out. I, I haven't seen a starting pitcher at this juncture yet. So it'll be interesting to see who they roll out. Um, MLB is uh, airing their top 100 players right now. I mean, I've been watching that. I've been reading articles. I've been deep in this thing for a good two weeks. Uh, then the WBC starts on the 7th. So... Um, I will be doing WBC coverage. Um, we've got some players all over, so you know that's that's really cool. We're gonna see uh, Rowdy and Urias and uh, Devin Williams and all that, and, uh, and it'll be fun. Uh, it's a different competition, a different level of competition because teams are playing for their con- our players are playing for their country, not for their team. Um, so we're gonna headline this video. We're gonna start off with. Um, kind of, I think I hinted at this yesterday, but I really want to, want to narrow down on it. Um, Willie Adamas has publicly expressed that he wants to be with the team long-term. He likes Milwaukee. He likes the ball club. Um, coming from another, another couple organizations, I think that's a very good thing. Um, I really want to extend him. He is the biggest piece that I feel is extendable right now. Um, I, of course I would say Burns too, but we all know where that's going. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to cry today. So, you know, like, let's just deal with that and move on. But Willie Adamas has expressed the willingness to sign a long-term deal to stay with the Brewers. Though he has also noticed the big contracts that short stops were able to secure this off season. When you see the guys, you know, getting paid, I mean, the group of guys, that signed this offseason, they were elite guys and they set the bar for us. You know, the guys that are coming up, he tells Rosiak, Todd Rosiak. Uh, he goes on to say that he'll let his agency handle the business side of things while he focuses on the baseball, uh, but adds that those other shortstops really set the bar for guys that are coming up. Carlos Correa ultimately settled for a contract below expectations after he after he had two deals scuttled by conservatives over physical but the other marquee short stops did well themselves trey turner got himself 300 million from the phillies xander bocarts got 280 from the padres and dansby swanson secured 177 million for from the cubs The 27-year-old will make $8.7 million in his final year before arbitration season in 2024 after he's slated to hit the open market. So, an extension for him would be would be the biggest, the best piece that we could do, um, especially knowing what the other players have made. Um, I could see him somewhere in that Dansby category. I think that would be a really great bargain if we could if we could pull it off. Maybe offer him five at 150. Um, see if he bites on it. Uh, he's definitely he's he gives that value add, that value add prop, and that's something we as the brewers need. Uh, so we are moving right along. Uh, so I have looked at this uh, Sunday fun day. I was curious about it because uh, I like to go to Sunday ball games, right? This is actually a pretty solid deal. I mean, you get four hot dogs, four sodas, uh, parking pass for just fifty nine. Get yours today. Uh, that coupled with the fact that they're doing autograph Sundays for the kids, uh, that's a great family day for baseball. 
Uh, you can upgrade these tickets for ten dollars per ticket, so that would go up forty bucks basically, uh, and get into the loge level. So that's still a stellar deal. I think those are going to sell out real fast. Uh, I haven't seen if they have renewed that um, that ticket pass thing. Um, that to me was also a cool concept uh, where you have the app or a sign like you just log in and then you can get access to all the games. I forget what it was called. I'm sorry. It's it's late and I'm tired. So too bad. So sad. I forgot. Um, but yeah, that was one cool thing I wanted to note. Um, a $290 million plan for the American family field is before the legislature. Here are five things to know. So they are working on the Tony Evers proposed $290 million to lock the team up to extend the lease. Um, so here's some things that they're looking at. The $290 million payment is part of a $448 million tab. The $290 million payment would be made to the Southern P Southeast Professional Baseball Park District. The state created the agency that owns the ballpark and leases it to the Brewers. That lease requires the stadium district to cover capital improvements until at least 20, at least through 2030 when it's scheduled to end. The stadium district already has 70 million set aside for renovations. That's left over from the five county 0.1 sales tax, which was terminated in March of 2022. Also the $290 million payment will earn interest over several years it's spent down. It adds up to an estimated $448 million of state-funded renovations over roughly the next 20 years. What are the benefits of spending the public's money? I don't know if I'm going to read this whole thing. This seems wordy. <laughs> Would extend the baseball club's lease set to expire at the end of 2030 to the end of 2043. The Evers administration says state income taxes and sales taxes generated by ball club amount to $400 million through 2043. American Family Field in 2022 supported 3,000 full-time and part-time jobs, including Brewers employees, people working for concessions operators, and other bar, ballpark vendors. Also, the 22-year-old ballpark has, on average, been driving roughly 1 million fans per year compared with the team's previous home county stadium. However, skeptics say there are numerous studies which say those benefits are overblown, with most of them going to the team's owner, executives, players, account, economic... <laughs> Economics, economists uh, point out that the money spent in the ballpark is discretionary income that will likely shift to other activities if the stadium shuts down. Would the Brewers leave Milwaukee if the spending plan is rejected? This is my favorite one. They just keep hyping this. They keep bringing this up. Uh, Brewers execs say the club wants to stay in Milwaukee. Principal owner Mark Antonazio hasn't made any remarks indicating he'd be willing to take the team elsewhere has discussed keeping the organization within his family. Uh, so if you didn't know, Mike, um, Mikey, Mike Antanasio is right now, he's kind of trying to get the director of fan engagement role is his title. Um, but he wants to move up through the ranks. I think that's why they started him with that position. Uh, he's tweeted about it a couple times and trying to, trying to learn about the fans. So good for him on that. However, even an implied threat to relocate after the lease expires at the end of the 2030, at the end of 2030 gives the Brewers leverage to seek funding for capital improvements beyond this year. In 2005, the Montreal Expos moved from Washington, D.C. and became the Nas Washington Nationals before no MLB team had relocated since 1971. Washington Senators became the Texas Rangers. That's like I said, they're 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 grass band straws there. That's that's just I don't know. I don't like that journalism. I'm sorry. 
Uh, the 200 million proposal needs bipartisan support. Evers is a Democrat, and the legislature is controlled by the Republicans in both Assembly and Senate. So the 290 million spending plan will need bipartisan support. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, uh, Rochester, did not shut the door on Evers' stadium proposal, but criticized the governor for not bringing it into the negotiations. Voss also said in a statement that he would look forward to working with his colleagues on both sides of the aisle to ensure the Brewers stay in Wisconsin. Senate Majority Leader Devin LeMahieu of Oosberg indicated that in an interview with TMJ Radio that he keep that keeping the Brewers in Milwaukee is vital. LeMahieu cited the economic impact, especially in the summer in southeast Wisconsin. The ballpark would get more gathering space, but no wider development plans. Uh, so this has been widely talked about the the deer a deer district, i.e., a beer district for Miller Park, uh, American Family Field. Um, they're basically saying that they would they would re- fix the retractable roof, the elevators, other infrastructure improvements. The Brewers remain open to working with other firms to redevelop a portion of their parking lots, but there are no plans to do that in the foreseeable future. So they do not want to jump on that bandwagon, apparently, at this juncture. Yeah, I, I think I think at this juncture, we, we that's in the hands of the government. That's a government matter. I don't really... I don't really care one way or another. I mean, yeah, of course, I'd love them to lock them up and get them to stay, but I don't think, I don't think that's going to make or break right now. I mean, it doesn't. Have, it's 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 building improvements and stuff like that. Yes, and it's keeping our team and stuff like that. But it's not, it's not a fire sale. I mean, there's no no immediate threat to that that they want a better deal or they're going to move or anything like that. That's none of the articles have said that. So fair enough. We're going to talk about another uncommon. Uh, well, lately he's been in the news, I guess. So, you know, lots of lots to talk about. Uh, power surge has turning in the conversation. A player can be disappointed, or a player can be disappointed and turn into something productive. Bruce infield prospect Bryce Turing is intent on falling into the latter category. Um, there are no hard feelings, Trang said, when he was passed over in September call-up last season. At that time, fellow former first-rounder dra- draft pick Garrett Mitchell was giving the Brewers a jolt. Turing thought he had a chance. He, His first full season at AAA was turning into an arguably the best season of his pro career at the plate, ending with a career highs in doubles 24, home runs 13, batting average 286, and a slugging percentage of 412. He played his usual strong brand of defense all over the infield, handled his first exposure to center field, plus Trang was would have had to be added to the 40-man roster in November anyways. So basically they're saying he's he's ready to he's ready to rock. But the call didn't come, so Trang focused on his efforts on finishing Triple A season strong. Now he's poised to impact the Brewers in the big leagues, if not on opening day, then sometime soon after. The only decision I can make is to play every day and play as hard as I can, said Turing, who ranked the Brewers number fourth, number four prospect last season by MLB Pipeline. So that's what I did. So he just turned 23. Um, he he is really uh, kind of a star. Uh, he's been a star. Uh, the guy is a good, good, good player. Um, but we're kind of, he's kind of been in that position where he's been blocked and held down. Uh, now he's got the opportunity to play. So, um, I think he's going to be on the opening day roster. That's, that's my thoughts on it. I, I hope he really, I really, really, really hope he does. Um, then if we go to our friends over at brewfanatic.com, uh, we got a new video up over there, so if you want to go over and check out BrewFanatic.com, I uh, just posted that a day ago. So there's a new video up there by me. 
Um, but there's also an article about my favorite unknown, uh, not unknown, but favorite non-discussed, uh, not everyday uh, brewer, and that's Peter Strzelecki. Peter Strzelecki, ooh, that's a tough one to say. Um, and the Brewers' brilliance on high fastballs. Last year, no team dominated the top of the strike zone with its fastballs more than the Brewers. With Josh Hader's overpowering high heat gone, though, can they sustain that? According to StatCast, the Brewers allowed a 243 expected weighted on base average on ball, fastballs in the upper third of the zone last season. That was tied with the Dodgers for the best mark in the league. However, the Dodgers threw such pitches at almost two two thousand two hundred times, uh, while the Brewers threw just eighteen hundred of them. Only the Rangers and the Yankees attacked the top of the zone. That was the Josh Hader in the mix for over half the season. Uh, so basically what they're saying, what he's saying is um, we, we were rated really well with hot strikes in the zone. Um, Peter Strzelecki is the guy uh, who would do that for us. He can dominate the top of the zone. And then they give a spray chart. Oh, they got some good reference. Oop. Looks like they got a video too. So yeah, I I think I think Peter Striggs like he is one of those guys that's a skilled guy that's set to break out. Um, I saw another article about him honoring his father uh, that was on the MLB page. Uh, just a lot of good content coming out about, and we're going to learn more about these guys. Uh, it's we had a group of guys before, and, and you know they were names we knew, and now now it's time to relearn all those names. So we're in that phase of relearning all the new players and everything like that, and it's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it, um, and I hope you guys are too. I hope you're enjoying this content. Uh, that's all I really have. Another quick episode for you guys. Uh, I try to make them quick if there's not a lot of stuff. Uh, if it's all the same stuff that we've already talked about, I'm going to wrap these as fast as possible. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Um, somewhere here is the next video or one suggested that you may like. Over here is another one. There's a subscribe button over there. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, like, subscribe, follow, rate, review the podcast on all podcast platforms. We are your only daily brewers podcast you guys have a great rest of your day and go brewers thank you thank you for watching the miller park minute go brewers